We kicked off earnings season in a big way here today with a number of the large banks reporting along with some airlines and, and other types of companies. And it was enough to uh, make the stock market a bit more enthusiastic than what we saw yesterday. We saw that big reversal, especially in some of those growth oriented companies yesterday. So we bounced back nicely today. We actually had a different crop of leadership as we saw the old school Dow Jones Industrial Average lead the way higher here today. We were up over 2% on that venerable index. So uh, we'll take a look at what that means for our posture. We did see some posture switches, so a little foreshadowing there. Uh, we'll then take a look at a trade application example from the uh, gold space, an area that we focused on a number of times uh, in this video, and we'll see if that can benefit from this news we're hearing after hours tonight from Moderna, uh, which reported some positive coronavirus vaccine news, and futures are up, so we'll see if that can carry through to tomorrow morning. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's July 14th, 2020. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel. While you're over there, check out our description area and sign up for our email distribution list so that way you can be notified each day when David and I post these videos. In addition to that, we're heavy users of Twitter. My handle is at Brandon Van Zee, and I would encourage you to follow me there for uh, daily commentary. In addition, we really appreciate you guys that are clicking like and retweet on these Market Outlook related posts. Lastly, we have a presence on Facebook as well. Feel free to join our group at the web address you see embedded in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the action here. And as you can see, I've got the S&P 500 pulled up on chart 6D for those of you that are premium members following along at home with your charting package. And the reason I start with this one is because we had more than a 1% move and this was the good kind, at least if you're a bull. We were up over 1% in the S&P 500 today. To make it exact, it was 1.34%. Uh, so a very solid day there. And you can see that that uh, got us up and over that uh, blue horizontal line there that represents the 1% zone and kind of continues on this theme that we've had for the last four or five months of uh, aggressive price action in either direction. Uh, but fortunately, uh, markets have been climbing that wall of worry for the most part. And we're getting awfully close to that June uh, 8th high in the S&P 500 here uh, as well. If we can break through that, we continue that upward trend, then the next bogey is our all-time high that we established back on February uh, 19th before uh, the world as we know it here, especially in the United States, changed in a big way. So uh, that's not out of question for us to be able to accomplish that. Uh, but obviously, we're going to need some good news along the way. And as I mentioned before, we did receive some tonight from uh, Moderna, which I believe was uh, trading up about 15% on that vaccine news and uh, that could uh, carry through to tomorrow's trading uh, as well. You did see that the uh, VIX did fall a little bit here today, so it fell, uh, but it's still at 29, so it's still considered pretty high. And I imagine if the stock market does rally uh, yet again tomorrow, the VIX would uh, likely fall from that 29 level. Uh, but you know, for the most part, you still have opportunities out there to sell premium, which is something that uh, we've been trying to do um, a little bit more so in, in some of these videos as well. In fact, um, one of the things I was going to uh, bring up here tonight, so if we come over here and look at um, this trade that we did back on, it was just a few days ago, it was on July 6th. Um, this is ChemBio. Uh, this particular stock caught my eye. It was up about 11% here today. Remember, this is the one where we just simply didn't um, want it to go down 40%. Well, the stock has rallied pretty nicely. Some of you that were more bold than I was, if you wanted to take a bullish trade on that one, let me show you the progress that that one has been making here. This is uh, CEMI. Um, we got into it back here on one of these two candles as we were emerging above here because we were kind of talking about that breakout above that zone and the potential for that big gap fill to take place right there. If you kind of see a six month chart here, you can see that this stock was kind of meandering sideways until breaking out in a big way uh, in, in April, gave back a lot of that, had some uh, negative news here, gap down, and now has been kind of emerging above that gap zone. So there's a decent chance that this thing could go and fill that gap. 
Well, anyway, um, it did trade up about 17%. looks like it's down after hours here, but uh, it, it was up 17% during the normal session. Remember, we sold the $2.50 puts, and we got into them on July 6th, uh, and we, we sold them for $0.10. Cents, um, and on July 6th, I guess that would have been somewhere right around here on this candle. And we basically just needed the stock not to fall uh, 40%. Well, instead, the stock has actually gone up pretty dramatically from it was around $4 at that time, and now we're up here at $5.50. So keep your eye on that one. It looks like there is some more positive momentum going into that one. We did run into that falling 30-day moving average today, so uh, perhaps a little bit of selling at around that level. And they do have earnings coming up here fairly soon, but uh, it looks like we're going to be good to go because remember, that trade was a July option and um, that expires just in three days. So assuming uh, it doesn't fall from uh, over $5 to below $2.50, that one uh, should go out uh, just fine uh, for our trade there. All right, um, let's go on over here to uh, the, uh, the normal four grid. And so for that, I'm gonna come over here to four B. And this will give us a good sense of what's been going on with um, the, the, the four major U.S. equity indices here. And we have some positive news to share. Uh, let's start with the Dow Jones, because that's the one I kind of highlighted in the intro. Take a look at this move out of the Dow today, uh, up 2.13%. Now look at that candle there, and you can see how excited the bulls must be at this moment, because we closed near the top of the range, and that is a that's a pretty darn big range that we had there, right? The daily range, as you can see in this uh, label up here, was um, almost 700 points on the Dow. Normally, the average true range is 541 points. So we had a way above average daily range, and we closed near the high of the session. We opened low. It wasn't even a gap up situation. We opened low. We closed high. Uh, we bounced off of this rising moving average in doing it, and now you can see that that background color has flipped from dark uh, pink to this light green. And the reason for that is today's move was aggressive enough that it actually pulled that green intermediate line up just a hair. So you can see here in the label, it says the intermediate line is at 46.72 and rising. So since it's now rising and no longer falling like it was earlier for the last couple of weeks, that has now reverted us back to that uh, bullish posture there. Now again, because it's below 50, remember that's considered weakly bullish, so it's not strongly bullish yet, but at this point with the rally that we're seeing after hours, um, you know, there's a decent chance that uh, we could, by the end of the week, get this back up uh, above 50 and actually be back to a strongly bullish posture on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So that was our leader here today. And remember, that's been pretty rare. We haven't seen the Dow uh, kind of assume that leadership role uh, too often in this rally. It's mostly been a, a NASDAQ type of a rally. Uh, but today we saw some, some big moves out of companies like Boeing. Uh, so BA, of course, is the ticker symbol there. And remember, since it's 100 an $80 stock, uh, it has a little bit more impact on a price weighted index like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So Boeing was up to about $180 here today. It was up about two and a half percent, but look at it after hours here as well. It's trading at about $183 after hours because of that Moderna news that I mentioned before. So uh, we could very well see uh, Boeing kind of lead this uh, rally tomorrow as well with the hope that maybe we'll get back to, to travel sooner than later if, if, uh, if we're having progress on a vaccine. We also saw Caterpillar uh, make a big move here today as well. So take a look at that candle on Caterpillar. Again, again, it's kind of the same story. Caterpillar is $137 stock, so it's going to be one of the bigger impact uh, players in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It was up almost 5% here today. Uh, we started the day off low. We ended the day off. Uh, we we ended the day at nearly the high, and we bounced up and off of this rising moving average a couple of days ago. And we're uh, on the cusp of breaking out on Caterpillar above uh, where it was trading on the market's high day, which was on uh, June 8th, at least their more recent high day. So that was when the, the S&P 500 topped out uh, on June 8th, uh, ever since we, we bought them back in March. So that's kind of a, a key point that everybody's shooting for. And right now, it's looking pretty promising there for Caterpillar as well. In fact, you can see after hours, Caterpillar is trading above 138. So we theoretically could break out 
on Caterpillar as soon as tomorrow if this uh, after hours rally holds. Uh, in terms of the other indices, you can see uh, we did have a, a nice day on the S&P 500 as well, up 1.34%. And notice that that, um, that, uh, that color of background uh, went from light pink to uh, this dark green color. And again, that's because the um, uh, intermediate green line on the market forecast is now going higher again. In fact, it's almost reaching the upper reversal zone on the S&P 500. On the NASDAQ, it was up 0.94% today. So a rare day where the NASDAQ was actually the laggard. So again, kind of stunned a lot of people yesterday. We had kind of back-to-back -back overbought cluster signals followed by a bearish engulfing candle and an epic one at that where we started high and we ended low. Uh, so while the NASDAQ did rally today and it was good to see it not just completely roll over, uh, it was actually the laggard uh, today. So there's still people kind of stunned a little bit after yesterday's major reversal of a number of those growth and momentum types of stocks that are out there. But of course, the NASDAQ has been a leader for a long time. And so most of the last three months on this chart, you can see the background has been uh, green and therefore we've continued to have that bullish posture. On the Russell 2000, uh, it was up 1.76% today. And there's something noteworthy there as well. You can see that uh, we are now back to a bullish posture on the Russell 2000. Now this one doesn't look quite as strong as the others because this one is not trading above a rising moving average yet. Notice the Dow with that green moving average, the S&P 500 with that green moving average, the NASDAQ composite with the green moving average. But over here on the Russell 2000, it's still a yellow moving average. So uh, anyway, we're not trading above a rising moving average yet, but we could be uh, very, very soon if we continue that rally uh, here uh, throughout the rest of this week. So um, it was an important day, um, to, to put it mildly. Uh, we had a great rally, a, a great uh, bounce back after yesterday could have um, you know, really disturbed a lot of the charts. Um, so there was strength amongst the bulls today, and that strength was enough to actually push postures from bearish to bullish in three out of our four charts that we see in front of us and then maintain bullishness in that fourth one. So uh, good news for those of you that want to be bullish out there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another chart. Let's do the three green arrows. And so that'll be chart 4D. And as we're looking at this, good news on this front as well, um, we got one more chart with a three green arrow signal, and that's the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the upper right-hand corner. We already had three green arrows on the S&P 500 and on the NASDAQ Composite. Uh, the Dow Jones just yesterday lost its three green arrow status because it got a red arrow on the stochastic, but it regained that green arrow just one day later. So we're back to having three green arrows on three out of these four charts. With the Russell 2000, uh, we still have red arrows on both the moving average component of the three green arrows and also the MACD histogram component. Those are both red arrows at this point, but we did get a phantom green arrow coming in on the stochastic. So right now the Russell 2000 is probably still considered the laggard from more of an intermediate time period, especially now that we can see that the Dow Jones is starting to burst higher. Remember for a while, um, the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000 both were considered laggards and it was kind of hard to see who was, um, who was losing more than the other. They were both kind of just underperforming. But now it's starting to take shape a bit more where we're seeing those mega cap multinational companies of the Dow Jones Industrial Average starting to perk up a little bit here uh, while the smaller companies in the Russell 2000 um, just kind of holding back for the time being. All right, uh, let's now get into um, a little bit of our uh, 12 grid analysis. And for that, I'm going to come over here and get started with our asset classes. This will be chart 5A for those of you following along at home. And as you can see, uh, we do have uh, quite a few green charts on, the, on this uh, first view of the 12 grids here. Remember that when you're looking at these 12 grids, the background color of the chart will tell you what the current posture is using the intermediate line on the market forecast technical indicator. If the charts are green, it means we have a bullish posture on that underlying security. If the charts are red or pink, it means that we have a bearish posture. So right now, as you can see, three of these charts are pink, and that includes the US dollar, 
Now remember what I mentioned just a moment ago, that we're starting to see uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average starting to perk up, whereas we're not seeing that with the Russell 2000 yet. Remember, that could be playing into it. The US dollar, when it becomes weaker than other currencies, tends to benefit companies that do a lot more business outside of the United States. So if you think about big companies in the Dow Jones like Procter and Gamble and, and Coca-Cola and even you know those Caterpillars and Boeings and other companies that I mentioned before, um, those are big multinational conglomerates that make a lot of money in, in euros and yen and yuan and rubies and, and you, you, you name it. Uh, you know this is a uh, the Dow Jones is, is a collection of multinational organizations that happen to be headquartered in the United States. But if those um, rupees, uh, let's say they're making business or doing business over in, in, in India, if, if the rupee is strong and the dollar is weak, when those get translated back into US dollars when it's time to report earnings, it makes it look as though those multinational companies have earned more money as a result of those currency translations. So keep your eye on that theme. If you expect the US dollar to continue to be weak, um, but you wanted to stay with US based stocks, then multinational ones might be a better fit for you than let's say some of those small cap companies, which a lot of small caps of course don't have the, the scale to do business globally they're probably just going to do business here in the United States where there is no benefit from a currency translation. So anyway, that has been kind of a continued theme as we're riding that US dollar uh, downwards off of that uh, falling 30-day moving average there, it remains with a bearish posture. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, we do have real estate or REITs uh, that also are considered to be bearish at this moment in time. They are now below a falling moving average as well. I had a little bit more hope for the REITs here a few weeks back as it looked like they were trying to gather themselves after really struggling uh, with the coronavirus. Of course, a lot of people not paying rent these days and that's gonna affect real estate companies. Um, but this last week or week and a half has kind of soured uh, the, the view here as we're now trading below that falling 30-day moving average again. And then the 10-year the US Treasury yield uh, remains weak. Uh, at this point, we fell yet again today. Uh, that 10-year uh, Treasury uh, yield is now at 0.61. Of course, the inverse of that is true. Bonds themselves likely went up, and that is the case. TLT was up today and remains above a rising 30-day moving average with a strongly bullish uh, posture. Now, the trend doesn't look that great on the US version, but if you take a look at foreign bonds, um, we have a very nice trend established out of BNDX, uh, which is what we use to track foreign bonds here. Now, in addition to that, uh, of course, we see all of our foreign stocks up above here. So EFA is this chart that I'm kind of circling. Those are your developed foreign markets. And then the emerging foreign markets, EEM, is this one right here. And both of those are in good positions as well. EEM itself, of course, has broken out. That's something that we've been sharing with you here for the last couple of weeks. So it's still at an elevated level. EFA, which had been underperforming, actually produced a pretty nice candle today. We were up 1.5% today on EFA, and you can see it's bouncing up and off of that rising moving average kind of giving us almost that Dow Jones type of a feel right now as well. And then the S&P 500 uh, also looking decent. Uh, you know, it's not quite to where it was trading here back at the beginning of, uh, of June, but uh, we're, we're not stumbling aggressively either. We're staying for the most part above that rising moving average. On the bottom line down here, um, our commodities are benefiting from falling uh, dollar as well. So oil uh, was up today, and then we saw gold up as well. And that's something I want you to, to pin in the back of your mind there because that will impact our trade application example I share with you here in just a little bit. And of course, you guys know I've done a lot of bullish trades on gold and gold miners in the last several months, and uh, I'm going to continue to do it <laughs> as long as we see uh, continue to see bullishness out of it. Um, I think that gold still has a, a bright future. Uh, and it's it's proven its worth here time and time again as it's mostly stayed above that rising moving average for the last three months. Let's take a look at another 12 grid now. In this case, we're gonna pop on over here to our US sectors 12 grid. And here it's a little bit more of a mixed bag. Um, we do have a number of pink charts on the board, including the financials, the industrials, energy, and real estate. 
Now all of those areas were up today, so that's a good sign. Um, hopefully that means they're starting to gather themselves and, and maybe try to stabilize and, and produce uh, some, so, 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 some support levels. Uh, but then again, we can't trust them all that much because out of those four charts, only one of them is trading above a rising moving average, and that is the industrials. And again, a big part of that's probably because of Boeing here today uh, really influencing something like XLI. Um, otherwise, those other ones are a little bit more uh, precarious just because um, you don't know if, if you can trust the, 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 the price action or if it's just kind of a, a quick little um, dead cat bounce type of a situation here. You can see that with energy and real estate, both of those have falling moving averages and prices below them. So that's why those moving averages are red. With financials, it has a yellow moving average. So that price, or that tells us in this particular case that price is currently below a rising moving average. So if the financials can get up and over that moving average, it would turn to green at that time. So maybe a little bit more hope there for the financials than what we're seeing with real estate and energy at this point. Now, um, you can see there's a lot of other green charts on the board, and most of them look really good. Um, interestingly enough, communications and technology are still trading well below yesterday's high. Uh, those are the areas that have a lot of momentum securities in them, so they were the ones that really suffered yesterday. But they had nice bounce backs here today, about 1% in each of those cases. Materials has been a really interesting situation. Materials was up 2.5% today. We're now well above those candles uh, from just yesterday and earlier. We're not quite to where we were back at the beginning of June, but materials have actually performed very well on a one month period. Um, that's something that kind of you know, surprised me when I was putting together some of my, my sector data uh, over the weekend. So keep your eye on materials there. And of course, gold mining companies are part of the materials um, uh, sector. So uh, that will kind of play into that theme that I'm about to show you here in a little bit for our trade application as well. But we had some other nice movers. You know, um, healthcare had a, had a really nice move here today as well. Uh, healthcare was up about 2%. That's one of the kind of the more focused areas uh, that we've had in my top-down trend trading class here uh, over the past week. And Staples actually had a very nice move here today as well. We we're up about 1.5% on Staples, but remember, Staples usually don't move a whole lot. Take a look at that size of that candle right there today, and uh, nice bullish engulfing candle. In fact, we were really close. We're basically at three-month closing highs on staples, pretty much just matching what we had back here on June 8th. So as soon as tomorrow, we could be up and through that resistance there on the staples as well. So I'd say um, we're getting more constructive uh, behavior here on a lot of these different sector charts. Now, speaking of which, let me pop on over here to the internet uh, real quick, and I'll show you what the sector selector rankings look like here. Uh, this was put together on Friday night, so keep that in the back of your mind. It does not include anything that happened today or yesterday, but will show us kind of what we were looking at kind of coming into this week. We did have communications actually make a pretty decent move. Netflix and Facebook and Alphabet and, and a few of those uh, in the communications group uh, performed very well late last week. Now, they were the ones that did fall on their face yesterday, so we'll see what that means uh, going forward for this graphic. But as of this moment in time, uh, coming into this week, we, we did see some strength out of the communications area. That meant that technology had to step aside, uh, which is pretty rare for it. Uh, technology has been a leading area for this market, as you can see, for uh, really the last uh, three months. And uh, healthcare, also a, a strong performer there. There's your staples and your materials kind of coming in uh, with strength after that. And then on the downside, uh, financials, energy, and real estate. A lot of those areas that I just rattled off here a moment ago when we were looking at the charts and we were seeing those bearish postures. So anyway, that's the, the view on the sector selector for this week. Um, you can see here over on uh, the, the, the website where we post our market outlook videos that uh, 113 of you clicked like for me uh, last time around on Twitter. I appreciate that. I generally try to get this up and over 100. So if you get value out of these videos, if you benefit from learning from David and I, we would encourage you to click like and retweet there for us on Twitter. Remember, uh, it takes up a long 
time for us to uh, put these videos together uh, and we don't uh, make any money off of them. So we don't uh, charge you guys any money to watch these YouTube videos and uh, we don't make any advertising money and we don't subject you to advertising or anything like that. So uh, point is we're just trying to get the word out about Market Scholars. So these are kind of considered more promotional videos. So uh, we, we do kind of uh, ask that you guys share with your social networks uh, these videos uh, and that way uh, we have some incentive to do these free videos for you as often as possible. So thank you to the 113 of you that did that the last time I did the video. Uh, we had some great classes here today. I taught my dividend growth investing class where we concentrated on the industrial sector today, uh, which did have a little bit of an element of aerospace and, and defense in it. Uh, speaking of some of those companies that were perking up today, so if you're interested in that, feel free to come over to our trading rooms and click on the calendar there. If you're a premium member, uh, you can check that out. Uh, and then uh, David taught his uh, directional option strategies class today. Tomorrow, I've got my factor-based swing trading class first thing in the morning, and then David's got his option inventory trading class. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get back on over to uh, our paper money account now and let's start talking about our trade application example. And for this, I'm going to come on over here to chart 3A. This will be our swing trading chart and I'm going to type in ticker symbol KL. This is Kirkland Lake Gold. And this is a stock that um, I know I've placed a trade on once upon a time uh, before as well for this video, but I think it might have been um, last year. It might have been fall or winter of last year, but it's kind of a newer gold mining company. Not a lot of people talk about it. It's kind of a more growth oriented um, uh, company. You can see that in the last, let's call it three years or so, it's had a nice steady progress. It used to be a $9 stock. It's made its way all the way up here to close at $44.99 here at this current juncture. And you can see that we're approaching some of these old highs that we had last fall as well. It was really in a nice trend up until that point. Of course, it suffered during the coronavirus and has been rallying back nicely. We're back up and over this important resistance area at around 43 or 44. So uh, that was part of the incentive to do this trade here today. But uh, the other thing that kind of caught my eye with it is kind of this uh, idea of a breakout retest in addition to a gap fill. So let me show you if I were to draw a price level here, starting with some of these candles as resistance over here. And I'll show you what I mean. Over here on the left hand side, you can see we kind of had three or four candles where price went up right to that blue line and then eventually rejected it. It actually touched it one more time over here and then rejected it and stayed below that that entire time. We also had an overbought cluster signal at that time. But anyway, as this stock has finally uh, kind of gathered itself and started to recover a bit, it eventually broke out above that zone. And just as, uh, you know, by coincidence, when it broke out, it actually broke out with a gap up. So some people might have missed that. You know, some, some trades are set up so they're not really going to be buying if there's a gap over the area where you're trying to buy it. So like you might have been trying to buy it at, I don't know, $44.15, but you wake up the next day and it's already trading up here at $45 and you might think to yourself, well, I better not take that trade because you know I'd be, I'd be chasing the stock. So you can see that after putting in that big gap higher, we did put in a uh, what's known as an overbought cluster signal here as well, and so we shouldn't have been surprised at that point to see three or four straight down days in a row after that, and that brings us to where we're at today. It looked like we were going to have our fourth straight down day this morning. We were trading well below yesterday's low. But as we started to see the day carry on, this stock started rallying, we actually ended up closing at the highs of the day and uh, we filled that gap from this candle to this candle in doing so. Not only that, but you can see the background color change from pink to blue in this case, which tells us that we now have a bullish posture using that near-term blue line on the market forecast, which we use for swing trading purposes as it emerged out of that lower reversal zone there. Now you will notice they have earnings coming up, so this may not be for the faint of heart. Some of you will, will maybe take a pass on this as a result, but what I thought I would do here in this case is a quick little swing trade. And what I was thinking is if this stock goes up tomorrow and starts trading above today's high, then I'm going to enter into a, a bullish position in this as a swing trade idea. And I'm going to put my stop loss 
a couple of pennies below today's low. So if today's as important as it seems at first blush, that should represent a fairly substantial um, kind of uh, support area there uh, as we continue to bounce higher. And I'm hoping that I get filled approximately where it closed here today. And if I do, then I'm gonna try to get out near the top of that prior day's candle up here closer to around $47. So I'm not gonna require it to go all the way up to 48. I wanna get in and out of this thing ideally before they have their earnings announcement here at the end of July. So uh, in order to do that trade, one piece of information I need is what was the low of today? And remember, you can find that up here at the, B, at the top of the chart. So the L colon stands for the low of the day when I point at that candle. Up there it says 43.35. So I'm, I'm gonna put my stop loss two pennies below today's low. And so that will be 43.33. And today it closed at 44.99, which actually was the exact um, well, it was one penny off the high. It touched $45 even. So one penny off the high uh, of today. So what I think I'll do is I'll try to buy this at 45 bucks. In other words, I'm willing to pay up a penny for that uh, if we can get it done uh, first thing in the morning. I don't wanna give up too much of the trade in this case because we do have earnings coming up quickly. So if it gaps up tomorrow by like a dollar or something, I, don't, I can't really afford to get into it uh, with a good conscience in that particular case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up as a um, buy stop limit to get into it. I'm then going to have an OCO bracket order working on my behalf to either stop me out at 43.33 or uh, stop me out, or not stop me out, but, but take me out at my target price up above. And in order to figure that out, what I typically do is a one for one reward risk ratio. So if I try to get filled tomorrow at I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in as a buy uh, stop limit order where my, um, my, my stop price is going to be 45. So in other words, if it just goes higher by a penny tomorrow, I wanna get in on this. I wanna get filled at 45.01. So I'm willing to give up a penny from where that, that, that limit um, or that, that, that stop would, would be. So anyway, I'm hoping to get filled tomorrow at 45.01 is, is the main thing you'll wanna know out of that conversation. Um, if I subtract out 43.33, you will see that that gives me $1.68 of per share risk. So if I were to add that back to where I assume I'm gonna get filled, which again is 4501, that means that our upside price target is 4669. So in order to place a trade like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on over here and just kind of hold my mouse close to where it, it finished here today and right click on that thinkorswim chart and go here to buy with OCO bracket. So you have to come down to buy custom and then there it kind of has a sub uh, menu that's available and sometimes it pops up to the, to the right. This time it popped up to the left where it says with OCO bracket. So I'm gonna click on that. That then loads up our trade down below. And I'm just gonna do 100 shares here by default but obviously you should be position sizing for whatever your, your account suggests. And what I'm gonna do on this top line where we have this kind of green uh, color that's our buy portion of our trade, and right now it's just set up as a limit day order. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that dropdown where it says limit, and I'm gonna change that to a buy stop limit. Now notice, when I clicked on stop limit there, it added an additional green row up at the top because there's two different things going on. There's a trigger price, in which case that is the stop, and then there's a limit price of what you would be willing to pay once your trigger is hit. So tomorrow, what I'm gonna put in as my trigger is $45 even. In other words, if this stock just trades higher tomorrow than where it closed today, I want to consider taking a bullish trade on this. This top number here, I'm gonna change to 4501, and that's like a, a limit order. In other words, what is the amount you're willing to pay for it? So if I got filled at 45 or 44.99, I'm fine with that. 
Um, if it goes up to too high, if it goes up to 45, 25, then I'm not going to take that trade. I'll, you know, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. We'll look for other opportunities out there. Again, I'm feeling a little bit pressured there because of the upcoming earnings announcement. So I'm not willing to give up as much in this trade as I've shown you in other trades that I've, I've done in these videos. So um, that's kind of the idea. If it goes up just a little bit tomorrow morning, I want in, but the max I'm willing to pay for it is 4501. Now on these other lines here that are in pink co color, um, this top one says the limit. So if we are to get filled on the buy part of the trade, where do we want to sell this? And that is what I was mentioning before, that number I, kept, I put on the calculator there, which was 4669. And we are going to put that in as a good till cancel order because there's a pretty decent chance it wouldn't go all the way up to 46.69, which is about right here on the chart. Um, first thing tomorrow, it could. It's not out of uh, you know out of out of question, but um, I, I want to make sure that the trade is working for us for multiple days if we need it to to do that. Um, the next one we also want to change to good till cancel. That will represent the stop part of the trade after we've been filled on it. And for our stop, that's what I mentioned before. We're going to put it at 43.33, which is two pennies below today's low. So once I now go to click confirm and send, in here you can see that it's saying, okay, you're going to buy 100 shares of KL at 45.01 as long as it ticks to at least 45 tomorrow. So the stock has to go up. If it gaps down to start the day, then I don't want to get into this because this is meant to be a bullish trade. So it has to go up a little bit for us to attract our attention. If it does, then we're willing to pay 4501 for our shares. After that trade is executed, then an OCO order gets launched. One cancels other. The upside that we're shooting for would be 46.69, which is $1.68 higher than where our fill price will be at 4501. And then our stop price will be at 43.33, which is $1.68 below where our expected fill price will be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send that in and we'll see if we can get filled first thing tomorrow morning. All right, well, thank you for joining me here yet again. It was a very positive day for the stock market. We had a continued rally after hours because of that Moderna news, and it looks like a lot of the indices are starting to perk up with more bullishness all of a sudden again with the Dow Jones leading uh, the way higher uh, here today. So uh, I hope you got value out of tonight's video, helping you set your posture and giving you some ideas from a trading perspective. If you did get value out of it, again, uh, make sure you go over to Twitter and click like for us there. Uh, remember, tomorrow's tax day as well for some of you. So make sure you're taking care of things on that end. And then David will be back with you uh, tomorrow night uh, with his video. So take care. Best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.